Okay, so I have something in the closet called clear varnish. Let me do this one here. Yeah, clear varnish. I'm going to go get it. You want to get it? You want me to get it? I can get it. Yeah. Just, just relax. Okay. Fans can wait. Be patient. Okay. You want to cross the top? You're going to go. I think I'm going to just do it. Yeah. Well, it's going to be tall and skinny, so maybe I'll just uh, just do the sides, I guess, and I'll make it taller. The, the parrot's tall and skinny. Did you just go right at the curve? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Clear varnish. Clear varnish. Made by. I don't know. It's in a, It's one of those jugs. It's in a, It's in a, It's. I think it's either golden or Liquitex, and it's in a pretty big container. Okay. A white container of some kind, kind of a jug. Well, I don't know, a jug, but you know, jar, some sort of jar. It's not even a bucket. Well, a little thing. That's just the closest I can remember, right? And uh, this, this is coming out good. That's coming out nice. We found it. Ah. <laughs> Can't open it, but we found it. There's no hot water in that sink, but I guess there's boiling water if you want to heat the tea kettle. Can't do boiling water from the lights on. Uh, no, probably couldn't. We blow the fuse. Anything? Not yet. Give me your goods. Well, I've got that, that special lid opener. Remember that rubber thing? I wonder where I put that. <laughs> I do. I have a special lid opener for hard lids. I think that's in the other room, too. A little rubber thing goes right over the top of that and you turn. Hmm. Stinks. Does it? Mm -hmm. What does it say to do? A while since I've used this. Do not use on suitcases. <laughs> Flexible color primer for absorbent non oily surfaces, suitable for priming surfaces before painting and oils and alkalides as well as acrylics. Provides an excellent tooth for pastels. Huh? Any color gesso, blah blah blah, blah blah blah. Normally dries in about 30 minutes and can be overpainted immediately. To seal porous surface, dilute up to 10% water. Do not over thin with water. Do not allow acrylic to dry on brushes. Clean immediately. All right, we're going to use this old brush. But the handle's loose and everything. It's an old pro stroke. It's an old varnish brush. That's perfect, right? This is clear gesso, so it's going to dry <laughs> even clear. Though it's, even though it's white as it can be. All right. As well. they say, and I will clean the lid so we can have this work next time. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's see if it dries clear, you guys, because it's uh, doesn't look all that clear to me. But it just could be me, right? I don't know though. I had cataract, you know, my cataract surgery done with this fake lenses put in my eye, you know, the glass ones or plastic, whatever they are. It still looks white, you know. So that's clear, but you know how sometimes acrylic mediums, they go on um, a color so you can kind of see where you painted them. And then, you notice I'm just doing it in kind of X's too, if you're watching me do this. We had that experience. We'll see if that we have a different experience with this suitcase now that we've primed it. Just, Nothing like a, uh, you know, following the rules. What do you think? 
Now I'm going to come up. See, I think I'm going to tape the top of this like this, like that. I'm going to tape around this top of this, like like that, and follow around the curve like that. Yeah, let me just come down like like that. Okay, just to protect this. Not that I just don't want to get paint right there. Okay. There. Oh perfect. Okay. I'm gonna come up about this far with my painting. And it's gonna feather up like that. Helps to know what you're painting. Now, in theory, this all dries clear, so we'll see, right? That's a Windsor Newton product? It's a Windsor Newton product. It's called Clear Gesso Base for Acrylics. Okay? You can kind of see where I put it on there. I want to just kind of flatten it out. I don't want any high spots. Just sand anything. Here we go. Well, I think that's pretty good. I don't see that I'm going to do much more than that. Do you? I mean, there, that's it. But now I think I'd start. To, if I do any more, I'm going to erase it. You know, that kind of thing. That end up erasing it. I want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to give John this brush. But that's it. That's all we're doing. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. You know, there we go. And we're just going to let that sit there for 30 minutes. That's what they said, right? 30 yep. minutes? At least 30 minutes dry. And let that dry. And uh, we're going to let John's painting dry. And we're going to do something different with him. We're going to take polymer medium and varnish on his suitcase. And then we're going to... I would have done three or four coats of it anyway um, on the suitcase afterwards, but I want to do one coat because I want to put in John's suitcase, I want to put um, this light pole and I want to use tape to get it straight and the tape right now is pulling the paint up, so that's not good because I didn't, I didn't prep the suitcase at all, I just figured it would probably stick. So, you know, whatever, it didn't, so that's okay. This is the adventure. See, I get to make all the mistakes for you guys. And you're like, oh, well, you know, like, what did you learn from this lesson so far? All right, let's, let's recap. One, have all your materials handy before you start. Handy and open. And handy and open. That would be a good thing. <laughs> you know, have a plan, you know, you know what I mean? Pack, you know, don't wait till the day before you leave to start this. How about that? Maybe try the month before you leave on a trip to start this. So you have plenty of time to let things dry and you're not feeling rushed. Those are a few little things that um, you sock folders probably already know, but um, we're going to suggest to the rest of you that this might be a plan. And we'll just see how this works, okay? So, all right. We're going to just stop the videos, and when we come back, we'll start painting on this. Okay, we're back. The gesso's dry, and we were just laughing because that doesn't look clear to me. That look clear to you? I mean, ha! Huh. It's all right. Went ahead and outlined the pictures. My picture. This is what I'm painting. So here's my. I'm gonna put my parrot in here. Like this, it's gonna be coming around here like. You want these brushes back? Oh uh, yes, please. Like that. It's gonna come down here, almost a heart shape. See that? And again, this video on how to paint the parrot is on our website, the gingercooklive.gallery. Nice, uh, let's see, I need this a little flatter. Okay. This is going to go here, and we're going to exaggerate this coming down like that. 
he's on a little post. Like that. That's a little footy around here. This just kind of, kind of goes back and then around. And then up and down like that. And here's the actual... I've got a photograph of some birds. Here's my photograph so I can get a little bit more accurate. I'm going to be looking at two. You don't see the tummy till the wing here. There's quite a bit of expanse on his back like this. And then you see a little bit of this wing on that side coming up like that. And his tail would hang, believe it or not, way down here. If I wanted to put it, the tail would be way down here so I can see the full tail. Okay. So I would say that's a pretty good rendition of the bird. Got a little twig sticking out here. Like that. Okay. All right. So if I'm saying that's my birdie, and I don't know if I've got any paint that's still good, but I think we'll just uh, go from here and start painting. Take a little angle brush. Start with the uh, white paint. I think it's still pretty good. All right. Now, wherever there's a part of the bird where the face is white. That's what's going to happen here. Now the gesso, wow, this is a much different surface to paint over than the other suitcase. i got to tell you, that made a world of difference. Really did. So I've got a a beak that's starting about here and curls under like that. There we go. Okay. And then this is uh, I'll paint that white there. See, I think my white paint probably had it. Let's put out some new white paint. Okay. I'll tell you what, on the tip of the brush, Jessica's had an hour to dry. They said 30 minutes. We gave it an hour. Okay. Okay, I want this wing a little lighter back here. And, uh, Just coming this way. All right, so what do we got here? Um, well, I guess we could try some red. Now I gotta tell you that this gesso surface is painting just wonderfully. Very made a huge difference in how this whole operation is behaving. Okay. And I want to come up just about like this with the top of the wing.
Yeah, let's see, we're gonna need a little yellow. Make this a little lighter orange right here. Okay, and let's see, what do we got? A little bit of yellow. Down in this area. Okay, and then how about down, down here at his tail? Well, I'm going to go ahead and put the blue in, I think. And then I'll decide about his tail. There's a little bit of, oh, all the blue's dried up. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Well, I've been gone about an hour and a half. Didn't cover this or missed it or anything. Stay a little blue here. A little light spot back here. A little darker blue on the tips, the wings. I love looking at parrots. They're so colorful. We had some for one time and I'm just glad that we don't have them anymore. They live to be a long time, and they're really smart, and they need a lot of attention. Nobody could ever give them the ton of attention. These guys really deserve to have either. Okay, so here's some blue coming down here. We're not going to see the tip. And we've got a little purple. And um, that's marine blue. Where'd that go? Okay. Purple and ultramarine blue, and that's going to come down here like this. Oh, purple. Oh, that's looking nice. Yeah. A little bit of blue around his eye. A little bit on his beak, too. Let's see. Let's get a rag I can wipe off on. Tint that a bit. And a little yellow oxide and a little white. A 
Okay. Okay, now what we got? We want a pretty sharp beak. We want it to be very sharp and it's going to curl back like this. All right. Okay, so far so good. That's some white and thalo blue. That's a pretty color. Okay, so far so good. Oh, we could do some dark brown here. Make a uh, a stick. Now let's take a little bit of magenta with that brown. A little bit of ultramarine blue with the magenta. Okay. Let's darken this outer edge here. Okay, there's our stick. I want some purple with blue and a bit of red. I'm going to make a dark color right here. A little bit of dark. Like I said, the complete lesson of how I did this is uh, on our website. Okay, so far so good. Okay. All right. So normal. I could spend time drawing that, or I could go ahead and get out some yellow and just make a dark green. Okay. Do that. Ultramarine blue, a little yellow. A tiny bit of red. Let's see, I think I want some sable blue involved in this. All right, so we're going to just say that everything is going to be really dark.
since the gesso didn't dry clear, we'll make sure that we're covering all the gesso. Working pretty good. I'm going to sit down and do this bottom part. I could use a bigger brush, but I've got this one, so might as well use it. Lighten the green around his beaks, so it'll show up. Okay. Now, yeah. well, let's see, I just want to be kind of careful when it comes to painting him. Where this is going to go. So I've got the small brush. Okay, so let's see more more blue okay let's open this up a bit more Okay. All 
Alright, that's coming along. Let's get all the background in. You notice that about every two strokes I get more paint. I don't know if anybody else notices that, but spread that around and then I get more paint. Okay, well, what do we got? A little bit of white, a little bit of yellow. Am I getting this in the, the frame, John? I think I was painting some stuff and it wasn't getting in the frame. I haven't been watching. No, okay. You're the monitor in front of you, that's what you're getting. Okay. Looks good now. Yeah, I moved it down. Looking pretty good. So that uh, Justice Green has the paint on? Oh, perfect. Made all the difference in the world as far as you know being able to paint it's something easy.
Yeah, that's sort of pretty, isn't it? With the, that's, that's looking nice, right? Yeah.
Look again. See, it's coming along, you guys. Filling in. Yeah. Getting back from it a little bit now, and you can see that just big, bold strokes. Uh, A little shadow back here on top of the beak, a little white. Okay. Um, put some rings are under the eyes like this. See how am I gonna do that? I'm just gonna make an ocean wing blue. Go around dot like that. Make sure I've got a dark edge. Where else do I want to? It's dark like that. There we go. Now let me get a little more white. Come down here and refinish the face. This way. This way, here, like that, okay. Okay, I'm gonna make that green. His little head shows up. Now what? Well, we've got some bright yellow, green, right up here. Right there. There. Here. Here. Back down here. Pretty. Something in here like this. Okay. The nice thing about these guys is they camouflage in so beautifully. Just bring that down. Now I've been in green so that I've got to really rinse my brush. I think I want a tiny bit of zinc white. Just a little bit. Yeah, I've got a clean brush. A little tiny bit of so where did I put that right? Here. the outside of this stick a bit. A bit of gold was it? There we go. Alright, so there's our little stick. I've got to put his feet in. It's coming around like that, and the stick is going through his feet. It's all brown in here and coming up like that. OK. 
Okay, now what? Let's reshape the beak. This comes down like this. And then curves in like that. And I want this to curve under like this, the darker right there. Okay. Now his eye doesn't look round to me. I'm looking at that going, the eye doesn't look round. So how can I fix that? Does it either? It's not round. Well, that's because it isn't. I can round it up. There you go. Let's make it bigger. It's really not right. It's a little round blue dot like that. Okay. Okay, I'm going to dry that real quick. Take some white paint very carefully, make it smaller. There you go. All right, so there's that. Let's get a few blue lines around like that. Now, this is coming. Oh, I see. At an angle like this, crossed here like this. All right. So far, so good. Now then, let's see. I still need a little bit of orange on his beak like this. A little bit of orange there. I don't want a little bit of orange on his shoulder too up here like that. A little highlight. Tap that off. Now carrots live to be about to they can live, they don't all live, but they certainly can live to be like 70, 80, 100 years old. I don't know about 100, but a lot of years they can really live. They're, they're an animal that lives a lot longer than the, they outlive their owners so often at a time. Which is a real shame. Okay, I'm going to turn my palette around. So I need to get into some clean red. Red is one of those colors that needs about two coats to make, look, to look at like anything. This is cad red medium. And I think this is going to be quite a success because, you know, when I varnish this, it will, um, the colors will even pop more. And I want that little bit redder right there where this, I got it dark, so I'm just going to make it a little thicker and bring some red out there. There we go. Well, I'm almost done here, you guys. You can see that now. I've just got a little bit of, you know, just a few little touches of red that have to go here and there. And uh, I'm sure I have this little bump right here, right on his head, right like that, that little round bump right there.
little bit of red on its face, believe it or not. All right, so let's just take the stand back and take a look at that and see how far I got. Do I need anything brighter? I need any bright yellow and red, any bright orange? How about coming right down into here on this side? Red right there. Okay, that looks good. And uh, lighten this up here. That looks good. And a little bit of mixing white. Where did I put that? I put that here. I want a little bit of a highlight right here. Top of the shoulder. Right back here like this. Okay. And any more green? So we got any more fun greens that we want to put anywhere? Got some pretty good dark greens right here. Just a, almost the color of the. There we go. Some nice dark greens here. Here. Down here. Kind of come through here like that. There we go. And I think I need a little more yellow or highlights. All right. <clears throat> this is definitely a bird that would be that we're going to be traveling with. This is fun. Want some bright colors. Right, let's rinse the brush. Put back into the yellow. And then that's into the Southern Ocean Blue right here. Which is, if anybody wants to know, Thalo Green and Thalo Blue and White. It's a close proximity to that. There we go. Let's see. I think we're doing pretty good. Let's see, I think I like our background. So this kind of disappeared into the another regions of wherever. Maybe we can make something darker happen in here like this. Let's not talk about just some sort of green stuff that's coming here. Okay. Kind of more like this. I love it how acrylics dry darker. So when you think you've got just when you think you've got um, all the lights and darks you want, then something happens and they dry darker. I need to bring some red down. A little further. Let's see what we got here. Cheese red light. Let's 
try that. Ooh, that's nice and bright, isn't it? Look at that. It's not your cad red anymore. That's Matisse red light, and that is a beautiful color. So much brighter. Okay, you can see. I can certainly see the difference in that. Okay. Say so that was pretty good. All right, you guys. I'll just spent a little bit of time, you know, cleaning up a few things, but I'd say my my parrot is done. the most, for 99% of it, see a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow, make a dark green color, brown. Let's just put our green back next to the bird now. Anywhere I didn't quite get paint. Make sure I've painted everything. Which I think I have. I'm kind of looking at that now. I think I could take a tiny brush. I'm going to do his feet. There's a little something with his feet. I need a little bit of purple and white. Yeah, a little bit of yellow with it. There we go. Let's try a little bit more purple and white. There you go. A little shadow here on the claw on the inside here. Okay. And, uh, See, I think we said that the stick went kind of up this way. Yeah, it did. Okay. Okay, so we got a little claw there. Now, anything else I need to do to kind of make this pop? Sometimes it doesn't hurt to exaggerate stuff. It never hurts. Okay, let's say that that's pretty good. Did we exaggerate the blues any? Okay, and we'll Southern Ocean blue and white, I think, would be the way to do it. Okay, we've got too much water on the brush. Lock that. Make this lighter. Oh, you know, it's fun to be able to just decorate your own stuff. Be able to see this at the you know at the airport. I'll be able to see my suitcase. It'll be the one with the parrot. John's will be the one with the street scene, and it'll be just nice to be able to decorate these things. I think. There we go.
Okay. Let's see, don't want to do anything about this. I think I want to just tuck this in a little bit skinnier. There we go. A little bit thinner right there. My parrot's been eating well. That's all I can say about him is he's been eating well. But I, I liked him eating well. I like that thing. Here, here, here we are. I think I've got, pretty much got him. Kind of captured him, I think. Yeah, let's do some warm. Green, yellow. Let's drop a little bit of green right here. Break that up. Yeah. Okay. So again, it's a suitcase. I want it to be sort of exaggerated. Um do here with a little bit of a just if I put a little color there maybe his um, I want his beak to show up that's what I want I want his beak to come around like this and curve back little sharp point. There we go. Like that. Ah, perfect. Okay. That's what we want to have happen here. There's a little line right there where his mouth is. We'll barely put in. Okay. Huh. Well, unless I could pop up the reds more, unless I went to a, you know, I think I've got my reds as bright as I've got them in this picture. Could be brighter right here. So what do I got? I've got some different reds. I own a ton of reds. Ah, oh, Scarlet Deep. This is a System 7 red. What can we do with this? This is the most expensive red Matisse owns. Let's see if we see a difference. Yeah, a little bit, huh? Let's put a little out here. This is a System 7 red. It's a Matisse Scarlet Deep, and it's number seven. So this is like, this is like the good stuff. This is look, this is a red that they when you go to print your paintings they can't duplicate. This is how bright this red is. But I don't know what kind of abuse the suitcase will take over time, so I'm willing to just add a few touches of that to this. There, okay. <laughs> That's very nice. Okay, so then what's left? Well, probably sign it. Again, we get down to the fact that we have no tiny brushes at this end of the world, which I do not understand. Oh, here's one. Here's a tiny brush. I will sign it. I'll be very happy with my suitcase. So I'm going to sign it with some white paint, which I don't have any more out. There we go. Let me go ahead and sign, sign it right there. And we're going to just call it a day. And I think this was a... Now, the thing that will have to happen now is that uh, this will get two or three coats, probably three coats, of varnish on top of that gloss medium and varnish. Okay, so there's my signature. Here's my red slash to the name, expensive red paint. Okay, just doesn't hurt to play a little bit, huh? All 
All right, you guys, there's our suitcase. How cool is that? Now, okay, so when I varnish it, I'll show you, when I varnish it, it will really be shiny and bright and neat. And, um, let's see, I've got this bird closer to the one I painted, but I'm just going to take, now that I've got this, They've got these rings, and there's a little bit of a right there on his nose too. His beak, there's a little dark, there's a little spot right there. There we go, and let's see if I got the dark here underneath here like that. Should have probably got out the white a little sooner, but that's all right. Let's rinse this brush off, make sure I have light paint on it. We'll even put some more out just to be sure. There's some white. Okay. Now, so I want white anywhere else. Just fix the, the foot and the branch. All right. Just going to make sure I've got this head just right. That's kind of silly for a suitcase, isn't it? To go to all this trouble. All right. Well, you know what? It's custom luggage. Then why not? Let's see. Do I have any anything else that I want to put on here like this? Or is there any other colors? Is there any phthalo blue? Something I need to go over a little bit. Brighten that up. I think that's pretty good. And again, when we varnish it, these colors will pop out. That that I can promise you. That will that will be very nice. These colors will definitely pop out when we varnish it like that. That'll be very nice. All right, I I could probably play another hour on something, but I think we're we're pretty good. I'm very curious to see how this this came out. Let's uh, there's the edge of our. picture here. So I can see where I could might have to come down here a little bit with the brush and just paint that where the tape was right like that where the kind of that other stuff went. Okay. All right, that looks pretty good. How about this side? Push this up a little bit. Wow, that came out pretty good, didn't it? Let me get this piece of tape off, but get that later because that just I don't know why that's stuck on there like that, but tape certainly worked well. Protected the suitcase. See, is that a little spot I can get off right here? Okay. All right, you guys, that's it. Parent suitcase. Aha! Uh -huh. And then we'll just hit the coats of varnish on it. 